So we're pleased to be here today at the OpenShift Commons gathering, um, and the topic today is data science. And uh, I'm Diane Fatima from Red Hat. I work in the AI services team. I'm here with David Cantor and Peter Matson. David is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the executive director of ML Commons, and Peter is the president of ML Commons, general chair of ML Perf, and staff engineer at Google. So Peter and David recently launched ML Commons, and we invited them to provide some background and history on ML Commons and ML Perf. And I want to say that Red Hat is really excited to be one of the founding members of ML Commons. So uh, to get us started, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds and some of the work that you do. So um, I'm Peter Matson. Um, I uh, run ML Metrics uh, for Google. I'm interested in measuring all things about ML. And uh, uh, before before that, uh, I, I studied compilers at Stanford. Um, I worked with a startup called Stream Processors and with NVIDIA for a while. Um, lots lots of different uh, opportunities to try and make complex things go fast. As it turns out, that uh, seems to be an eternal need. So excited to be trying to do that for, for ML and also try and make it better as we, we push forward things with MLPerf and ML Commons. David. Uh, yeah, David Cantor. Uh, and so uh, pre-ML Commons, uh, I spent a lot of time in computer architecture. I actually uh, started a microprocessor company that was sort of doing a fusion of uh, compilers and hardware design to uh, exploit more single-threaded performance. And then uh, after that, I ended up consulting with a number of companies, uh, one of which was Cerebra Systems, which is now, uh, uh, like Red Hat, a uh, founding member uh, of ML Commons. And that's sort of how I got involved in this. And I actually have a little bit of uh, background in benchmarking, uh, which kind of came in handy and is uh, part of the reason why uh, I got involved. And it's just, you know, it's it's very exciting to be able to build this kind of a, a, an open community. And we really do uh, appreciate that the, the role that Red Hat is playing. So I don't know how many users are aware that ML Commons uh, originated in ML Perf. What led you to start ML Perf? Peter, I, and um, uh, what were its goals, and how did it evolve into ML Commons? Sure. So um, about um, uh, about three years ago, um, we were looking around at uh, ML, um, and in particular uh, ML hardware in Google, and trying to understand um, you know, how fast were different options. Um, and we decided that we really needed to have a, um, a good ML performance benchmark. And there did not seem to be an industry standard uh, solution for this. Um, so we uh, rounded up um, a set of usual suspects. Anyone we could, we could find that we thought had done uh, strong work. Um, so folks like uh, Greg Diamas from Baidu who did uh, DeepBench. Stanford Don Bench folks, uh, Matai Zaharia and, and Peter Bayless, um, and um, the Fathom folks uh, from Harvard, um, and uh, got everybody in a room and uh, put forth the, the the challenge: like, should we should we try and come up with one benchmark uh, one could use to measure training performance? And everyone thought that was a great idea, so we. Came up with a set of rules, um, brought in a bunch more folks from industry, um, strong players um, like NVIDIA, Intel, startups like uh, Cerebrus, uh, which is like how, how uh, David got uh, sucked in. Um, and the benchmark uh, really took off. Um, we had our, our first set of rules out in the middle of uh, uh, 2018. Um, and then uh, results by the end of that year. Um, we've had several rounds since then. 2019 uh, was a big year of growth. We got into inference. Um, um, we got into uh, HPC. Uh, 2020, we continued to expand. Um, and we also um, started ML Commons, sort of the, um, the, the driving function behind that was we were looking around for a home for ML 
wanted to put in a nonprofit organization. But we wanted something that was engineering focused and ML focused. So open engineering and ML. And we couldn't find that particular combination. We could find large organizations with, uh, like Linux that were, were very um, focused on open engineering in general. We could find some that were, were focused on ML in particular, uh, like uh, Neuros, but they were more event oriented. And so we decided to start one. Um, you know, we wanted a, an organization that that was their, their reason for being, was to try and come along and make ML better. And we, we put uh, MLPerf into ML Commons. MLPerf is, is still very much uh, going strong and, and growing, but it, it now has uh, oh. We also looked at the field of ML, and we feel like it's a, it's a very young industry, right? It really has uh, a tremendous amount of needs to mature as a field. It needs, it needs, uh, you know, the same things that drove sort of the industrial revolution. Great ways of measuring things. It needs good raw materials, data in the case of ML, and and it needs good ways of making things, standard ways of making things. You know, a shift from doing things in your basement to, uh, you know assembly line production at, at high quality. And we wanted to see whether we could form an organization that would uh, answer that call and try and provide those things and really move the field forward. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so, so, so that's sort of the, you know, the driving motivation. And I think we kind of ended up with three key pillars that we like to talk about. You know, and that would be the, the benchmarks and metrics, which, you know, we've talked about MLPerf, um, as well as uh, building large open data sets, which we think are another key ingredient towards really democratizing technology, right? And, you know, the same uh, way that open source really has enabled and fundamentally transformed, like, the art of software, uh, whether software as an art or, or as an engineering, it's just, you know, utterly unrecognizable compared to 30 years ago. And, uh, you know, sort of the, the analogy is that, that data is sort of that same raw ingredient that you need to, to start building up machine learning. And, uh, you know, the, the more large and open data sets we have, the more folks are able to extend ML capabilities and use them in products and extend those benefits to the whole world, right? Um, and, and the third pillar, is uh, best practices. And I like to think of this as removing friction, right? And, and uh, or, or perhaps, you know, the transition from sewing your own clothes to, you know, having a, 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 an abstracted uh, assembly line where there's a real flow. And, uh, you know, today with ML, there's a lot of things, whether it's model portability or just, you know, even deploying a model is tremendously high friction. But if we want ML to become pervasive, we need to drive those sources of friction down so that, you know, maybe in the future, doing things with ML is almost as easy as, you know, grabbing a library off of GitHub and then, you know, looking at the comments and maybe asking some questions on Stack Overflow about gluing it together. Like that's a future we would love to go towards. And we uh, are very fortunate that, uh, you know, when we went out and started talking about this vision, you know, it really resonated with a lot of companies. Um, you know, Red Hat is a founder. We've got about uh, 39 uh, companies that are founders and a, a total of over 60 members. So some of those are individuals like myself or, or academics uh, associated with universities. Um, and so we've really built this just tremendously vibrant community to focus on advancing innovation in machine learning and kind of extending those benefits through all of society. And it's, you know, very much organized in, in the principles of open source, right? We're very open. We like to move fast and iterate. Okay, great. So um, are, are most of those members then hardware companies? Can you just go, like, give me a little bit of a breakdown there? Sure, yeah. So we absolutely have uh, a lot of hardware companies. Uh, you know, Peter named, named a few, like, uh, Intel and NVIDIA, as well as, you know, startups like Sentient and so forth. Uh, but we have uh, a number of cloud services companies and software companies as well. We really see uh, this is a big tent where there's a lot of folks who can play. Uh, 
you know, to name an example of, uh, you know, sort of a more purist software company in some sense, VMware is involved. Uh, there are a number of ML software companies and then a, a lot of uh, uh, cloud providers who provide computing services in, in one fashion or, or another. Um, as well as, you know, sort of very ML focused uh, uh, companies. There's a couple startups that focus on repli replicating uh, experiments and things like that that are engaged. So it's a really lovely uh, and diverse community. And also across all geos. Um, this is both a blessing and a curse. Um, it, it, for those of you in distributed organizations, you know the challenge of finding a time that works for folks in Asia, folks in Europe, and folks in America, which is there is no such time. But you know, it's great to have such a diversity of participation. Can you give me some examples of projects that are going on in ML Commons? Absolutely. Um, so I'll probably start off with, uh, you know, one or two. Uh, so the MLPerf benchmarks are pretty well known, but one of the things that we are doing is trying to sort of grow the footprint and move into, you know, some, some new areas that, that need attention in terms of ML. We started, as, as Peter mentioned, with training. Uh, I got involved and helped to lead doing inference benchmarks. And then one of the things that we branched off to do was to start focusing on mobile phones uh, and, and ML in that context. And then there's some efforts that we have around, uh, you know, sort of the Internet of Things and tiny devices. So that's one way that we've been expanding uh, with different projects in the metrics side. And then one of the things that I think, you know, actually, you know, brought us together, you and me most literally, was ML Cube, which is one of our best practices. Right? And that is a... Uh, that is a set of conventions around containerization that help you sort of abstract the machine learning away from all the other pieces of the infrastructure. And, you know, I like to talk about this in terms of both portability and reproducibility. And, and one of the examples I give of how this can help is when I think about a game-changing innovation like BERT. It was first published as a paper by Google, and there's probably some code in TensorFlow. But if you wanted to wrangle that and try that with your customers, you might spend a month or two doing that. And, you know, the vision is that maybe one day we can get that down to a day or so or less or maybe even hours so that, you know, if, if you want to use an innovation at Amazon or Facebook and, and try it out on premise or in a different cloud altogether, that becomes frictionless. And I remember, you know, one of the first things that, that brought you together with us was you were working with some of our benchmarks and trying to get them to work. Uh, on on Red Hat, and you know it was it was a bit of a struggle, and so in some sense it was born out of that need and desire. Um, and you know uh, we also have some data set projects, and uh, I'll let Peter talk about those. As uh, as David said, there's three big pillars for us, which are um, uh, benchmarks, uh, best practices, and data set. Um, I think in many ways uh, data sets are the new code. Um, they are uh, the way you express what you want your machine learning uh, product to do. Um, the models are, in some sense, a, a lossy compiler for that. Um, and one of the key kinds of data sets that really drives innovation in the field is public data sets. You think about what ImageNet has done for the field, right? That, that costs something on the order of $300,000 to build. And uh, arguably, it's created modern machine learning. We can't build performance benchmarks without good data sets. Um, you can't do good academic research on anything without a good data set. And a lot of the data sets we have now that are really best for their task, and they were kind of created haphazardly, um, you know, an academic group needed something specific, they created the data set and then moved on. And there's, there's a data set out there Usually, you know, a very modest size compared to what's actually industry, um, often under restrictive uh, licensing terms, um, and it's it's not growing and evolving with the field. And so, what we would really like to do with ML Commons is create a uh, a center of excellence for public data sets, a, a group of people who are really excited about making sure there are good public data sets out there that are are growing and evolving uh, to suit the needs of the field. Both actual data sets, uh, for instance, we um, just announced uh, the People's Speech, the uh, largest uh, publicly or soon to be the largest publicly available uh, speech data set by order of magnitude, 
that includes a, a diverse range of languages. I think it's over 60 languages, um, uh, more diverse range of speakers than what's available now. We really want to push that forward because uh, you know that makes uh, speech to text, to text technology accessible uh, globally if we can get this right. Um, we're also looking at uh, potentially data sets for recommendation systems, which are incredibly important in the industry, um, and potentially uh, a framework for doing very privacy pr protecting um, medical uh, data sets for accuracy validation. For people looking to say, will this model really work in clinical practice? We've got a wide range of projects we're looking into all around this sort of central theme of make good public. Okay, well, that is great. So if someone in the audience right now is really interested in getting involved and, you know, in one of these areas that you've discussed, you know, I'm just wondering where do you need contributors right now and, and how could they go about getting on board and helping out? Yeah, so uh, first of all, you know, like, like most open source communities, you know, we, we really uh, love folks who show up. And in fact, you know, I uh, just to give you an example of that, uh, I originally showed up to a meeting at, I think, the Stanford Faculty Club, one of our early ones, that was posted through a call on the comp.arc Usenet, uh, right? And, and I showed up and, you know, eventually I did so much good work that I got punished and they made me executive director, right? <laughs> Take that. <laughs> we, we're, we are an extremely uh, open organization. Um, so if you go to our website, to, to mlcommons.org, there's a page about getting involved. It lists out all of our working groups. Uh, you know, I, we've talked about like three or four projects, but there's, pro, there's over 10 different working groups. You know, everything from focusing on low power embedded benchmarks to logging to uh, algorithms and so, each of those uh, uh, working groups, we have chairs. Uh, Diane, you are, you know, one of the chairs for ML Cube. Uh, and so, if you go to the page on ML Cube, you'll get to see, uh, uh, you know, a bit about Diane and what what the project focuses on. So you can look yeah. through those, and uh, you know, we are uh, uh, open to individual members, and and many of our projects are open source in nature. So you know, you can stop by GitHub, sign the CLA, and uh, you know, if you see some bugs, we always love those getting fixed and. Uh, you know, I, I think, again, like a lot of open source communities, it's something that, uh, you know, you get as much as you give, right? It's, it's the potluck model. And, and so I think there are a number of folks who have kind of wandered in randomly and found that it is, uh, you know, uh, really fits their interests. Uh, some of the folks on the data set side are just phenomenally passionate about speech, and this is just, you know, a really wonderful thing that just aligns with what they want to do. So. We'd, we'd love to see more folks getting engaged. Both, both from industry and academia. We have uh, quite a few faculty already involved and, and we'd like more. We'd really like to maintain that balance and, and just a, a community that's that's really open and, and, and wants to push innovation, move the whole field forward. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So, and then if you want to get like the links and things, go to mlcommons.org, is that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a great group of people. Very friendly group. So glad I joined it. And uh, yeah. so thank you so much for being here today and talking to us. Thanks for having us. This has been great. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. And, and also, you know, thanks for all of your uh, contributions to the community as well. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a, a, a great partnership. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you.